Hello and welcome to the Kitchen Table Modellers Workshop. My name is Ian, this is my kitchen table, it's where I do all my modelling. So this is going to be part three of my Ravel 132nd HE 111 Big Build. Uh, it's a quite a long part, it's about 50 minutes, uh, but in this time we're going to look at the detail of the interior, um, trying to bring it to life a little bit with some basic weathering techniques. We're also going to look at some of the photo etch that goes into the cockpit and we're going to have a look at assembling the HGW, if I got the packet here, HGW um, Super Fabric Seatbelts, which I have to say are a really nice product. Uh, first time I've used them, uh, it will not be the last time, that's for sure. So, enough waffling from me, let's get on to the video and see how we get on. Right, so, back on the table. Um, and onto the interior painting. So what I'm going to do is we're going to paint the we're going to paint the ammunition uh, canisters for the MGs, and we've got a radio set there. And then on the other side we've got all the radio sets here and the ammunition. Now uh, I believe. It must be some sort of hydraulic pump or something for the aircraft there. I believe that is um, RLMO2, which is the interior colour. Uh, but we might, I need to do a bit more research, it might be um, German Grey, uh, which is either X, XF63, if I remember rightly, in the Tamiya colours, or I'm actually using uh, Ravel Aqua colours. Um, and their Panzer Grau, which is a perfect match for German grey is number 78 um, and then for the canisters I'm going to do them semi-gloss black and then you'll notice the handle there I'll do that in a leather colour I believe that was a leather colour a leather handle on the canister and for those I'm going to use another Ravel aqua colour and that is number 302 which is the silk black silk. It's a lovely colour to paint. So that's the two colours I'm using. I've got a couple of brushes. So I've got a Italieri uh, number no. 6 flat flat brush and I've got a Master Tools which is the Trumpeter company. So that's a flat brush and it's a, a number one. And then for the areas I can put a bit more paint down is just a, a standard number no. 6. Um, and if you just yeah, if you just lick the brush, you can get it into a nice point once they dry out. Uh, saliva helps keep the brush in the point and doesn't do any harm. Like, especially when you're using acrylics, you just wash it out with plain water. There's no nasty chemicals in it. So that's the three brushes I'm intending to use. Now I do apologise if I knock the the tripod. Um, can be a bit shaky. So. Yeah, let's we'll go for the radios first and once we've done that and whilst the base colour paint is setting we will endeavour to move the camera a little closer and we'll maybe start putting some of the photo etch um, onto the seats although I do have to paint or get cut a resin cushion and paint it to go in here and this all needs to be painted as well before we put the harnesses on so I might paint those first before I start putting the photo etch on but we'll, we'll see how we get on anyway we'll start start with the radio and uh, see how we get on from there so I'm just going to get set up and we'll be back in a moment right so we've got the paint laid out and the beauty of these Ravel pots is the lid comes off and locks into the side of the pot and you've actually got a little uh, reservoir there where you can get your paint in but you can also get it to the right consistency um, so I've thinned it actually thinned it with a little bit of uh, Tami Rex 20A so I'll just make sure you're you're in shot and then we can get in now the beauty of the Ravel paint it goes down fantastically I do apologize if I am cutting the shot with the fuselage a little bit, but you can see how little I'm having to 
Load up my brush. It's getting really good coverage straight away. As well as that, it's not it's not filling the detail with paint either. So when it dries you'll have all that lovely rib detail on the on the side of the canister. And what we'll do as well, just to try and bring it to life, is we'll take a, a light grey and we'll we'll do a bit of dry brushing on canisters just to kind of highlight the, the tops of the ridges looks like the lights catching on them maybe and that will just add a bit more depth to the detail inside the fuselage now obviously getting around the back of the canister is going to be a bit tricky but let's be quite honest if we can't see this here with this great open top and it's all closed up nobody's going to see it I suppose if you really want to make sure it was all done properly, then all this could have been painted well before you put it in. Uh, the other thing to do as well is remember we've got some open windows here. So I can get the shot, there we go. We can always dive in here if we've got a good steady hand. And just with the point of the brush, uh, feed the paint in. Again, don't worry. If you get any in the windows, because this is a water-based paint, it's dead easy to clean up. And ultimately, we're going to put glass in there yet, so... There's plenty of opportunity to rectify any small painting errors. Uh, the only thing I'm going to apologise for is maybe if I'm moving out of shot slightly, because... got some magnifiers on but I, uh, I broke my glasses a few weeks back and I only have one pair of glasses put them to the opticians to get repaired um, of course there is very little in the way of optical lens manufacturing at the moment so I only need one lens but taken about three weeks so far to get this lens ground and put back into my glasses so I am struggling a little bit to see which is why I've put off doing this but I can see just about well enough with these magnifies on to see what I'm doing so Same again here. We'll just get in through this window, just with the tip of the brush. And it doesn't matter if you need to come back a few times to get it done. That's if you just take your time to do it. If you're worried about slightly going over it again that doesn't matter too much because I'm intending to put a wash on here which will probably highlight all the panel lines and whatnot. And the problem when you have this is light. Light is your friend but it's also your enemy when you can't see what you're painting. There we go. However when you're putting black on a lighter colour you can see where you've painted, even if you can't see exactly where you're painting. So yeah, probably in hindsight it would have been better for me to have painted all this before we put it in, but hindsight is 2020 vision, so something I'm seriously lacking at the moment without my glasses. You can move models around and you can get them to the point where you can get the brush in. And you'll notice as well that I'll, when I'm painting, 
I'll have my hand on the model, the other hand's on the bench, and that way I'm supporting myself to keep the brush as steady and as accurate as possible. And that way I'm minimising the amount of overpainting I'm doing and any major sort of repairs I maybe have to do. But just let the brush do the work, don't force it, take your time. Just paint the ends. That is the first row painted, so let's go and paint all the ones on the wall. These will be easier to do. Hopefully, we'll keep it in shot through this time so it's actually sees me doing something instead of seeing a bit of model zipping around the place. Now, the Eddard, the big Ed set, does have photo etch replacement handles for the Ravel canisters. And it also has um, the front and the back, so you get these nice sort of ridges and whatnot. But these canisters are actually resin replacement items um, that my brother in law bought for the kit. And we chose to use these in lieu of working with all the faff of the extra photo etch. quite recall what the resin canisters were, which is a shame because they're really, really lovely bits of casting. So, glasses back I'll be able to find out all the errors and the faults. But what I can actually see is not too bad. And really touching up isn't going to be too much of a problem. There's a bit of drop of RLM2 on the brush. The rail model there will be fine quickly and it'll tidy up anything. A lot of that we're going to be putting a wash over here so it'll neaten up all the, the demarcation lines between the panels and bring it all together. So what I tend to do is I will in the first instance dry brush all these parts to bring back the the relief to detail and then we'll pop a wash over it just to reinforce all the, the low points and if the wash knocks the dry brushing back too much then well, we'll just go over and dry brush again it's dead simple again you're not going to see a whole heap of this so I'm not going to just there's too much time detailing up the inside. So I am going to I'm going to carry on with this. As you could sit here and watch me paint this all day, but it might be a little bit boring. So I'm going to carry on. I'm going to paint this these canisters up here and then we'll paint these in the upright racks and then we'll get on to laying down the German grey for the radio sets um, and I'll come back to you for that. So give me a couple of minutes and we'll come back and we'll be up with German grey painting. Right, so that is all the ammunition canisters painted now. So we are now on to painting the radio sets. So what we've got here is the German Grey and the beauty of 
the Ravel Africolas though they are true acrylics so they can be thinned with water and they thin very nicely with water actually so again we just get in here and I'm trying to use mainly just the point of the brush Again, the hand that's holding the fuselage, my forearm is on the table, just keeping it as still as possible. I try and rest my other forearm on the table, and then I will hold on or rest with my finger on the model itself to steady the brush so I can try and paint in fluid motions without. without jerking the brush across the surface and making a mess. Now obviously where having a nice demarcation line isn't so critical I won't need to support myself so much but when I am painting a radio to fuselage join I want to have a nice, well as nice as I can demarcation line now again any any yoga paint can always be touched up now what you want to be very careful when we're painting the details on the front we want to get enough paint to cover and the Ravel paint is very opaque so it covers beautifully and you don't need thick heavy coats just lots of light coats and as you work with the point of the brush try and go in every every direction you can and that will work the paint in to all the little nooks and crannies and give you a really nice base paint layer to come back in and do all the detail work and there will be a little bit of detail work because I have to draw in there with some defined colours to pick out the dials um, because there's a resin set although the the Big Ed set does have photo etch replacements for the radio fronts. They're no use for a resin set because the, res the radi resin radio has got all the details in relief. So we're going to have to hand paint them, which actually shouldn't be too much of a problem because the, the detail is very crisp on this resin set. Um, and we can use the photo etch sets for our colour reference see that we've got the right colours all the dials and whatnot so just every now and again dipping the brush into the water put some light on that and just to keep the paint nice and thin and then I'm just using the point I'm not using anything else, just the point, and it's very thin, even coats. And again, just rotate the fuselage to an angle that suits you in with the brush, and you can use all the openings to get in and paint the surfaces you need to paint. I absolutely love Ravel Aquacolors for brush painting. They are stunning. Now, we are getting to that point where we've just about done this.
I've just got this little box here to paint. There is a bundle of cables underneath, but I think we're going to leave them. I might paint them a, a lighter colour, and then we'll let the wash highlight them. And you may well see them from the opposite windows, but you might not. It just depends how much light, residual light, ends up in this. There might not be a huge amount of light, so you might not see much of this detail. On the other hand, you might see a bit, so let's just finish that side up. There we go. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So that's the radio sets done. Focus, get my light in there. There we go, you can see the detail there. Beautiful. So we've got this radio set here to paint. And then once I've finished painting this, I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry um, a good few hours before we come back and do the dry brushing. So I'm gonna paint this and then we're gonna go and move over to the cockpit itself and see what we're gonna do, detail painting and photo edgeways. Okay, so we're back, and uh, as you can see, I've found the resin cushion that goes in the pilot seat. So I have got Ravel. Uh, da -da -da, a quick look at that. So we've got Ravel Stone Grey, which is quite a light colour. Again, once I've gotten a wash on this, it'll darken it down a bit, so it should be okay. End up a sort of khaki colour. Uh, because these are just materials, so now a bit thick yet. Yeah, let's just thin it down a bit more. There we go. It's got a nice smooth consistency. Probably about the old single, single cream consistency. A nice paint strokes. Now you can block the middle in, no bother at all. Obviously when you get to the edges, you need to take a bit more care. Get that shot a bit better. Again, so I'm resting, uh, as before, my forearms. On my forearm and my wrist on the table to give me a bit of support for the brush. Using the point of the brush. And running it along the edges. And the beauty is when you start putting on paint, the, like the detail paint, then you're adding colour to the model, you're bringing it to life. There we go. And as before, the, the Ravel Aqua Colour covers brilliantly. Lovely, opaque, smooth finish. There's a few air bubbles in, but they'll naturally, as it dries, disappear, sink back into the paint. And you'll be left with a lovely, smooth finish. Which will take a wash and a dry brush. Lovely, because you can see that quilted pattern there. So the wash on that will sink in to all the recesses and then we'll dry brush it with a little bit of off-white or maybe deck tan or something or buff, just a lighter shade of colour than the, the base colour. Um, and we can either do that in acrylics, we could do it in enamels, or we could do it in oils. Just whatever is going to give you the shade and the colour that you're happy with. Now, when I do material surfaces, I'll probably do two or three goes at dry brushing, let it dry off, put a wash on, let that dry off, and then we'll go back in with a dry brush and I'll build the layers up so you get this multi-layer tonal variation which 
ultimately is how you get a lovely detail finish that's interesting to look at and is realistic in in scale so now remembering to paint the back of the strap because it is just the strap that's over like a a u-shaped steel for or aluminium frame and then they just put this sort of t-shaped fabric strapping in to make the, the harness for the pilot and the co-pilot navigator bomb aimer a little bit of flash that I didn't notice when I put the base colour down and we can sort that out before we do too much more because it will look flashy no matter what we do unless we get rid of it this being a resin part is very easy to get rid of we'll just use the swipe of a exacto blade or a scalpel blade and We'll just scrape it off. Now, this is the versatility of the Ravel paints as well, because we're painting straight on to uh, resin. And if I'd had my thinking cap on, I would have had this in when I put the base coat paint on, and that would have acted as a primer. Obviously I wasn't thinking, so I didn't. But the Ravel covers it nicely anyway. Oh, and there we go, we've got a big splodge on the side, so this is a good opportunity to get rid of that. So I'll just take this little brush, get it wet. I know the water's a bit grey, but it's clean enough to do this. And then just get in there, I flood that area. Dry the brush off and then wick away the paint. And if you want to wick away a bit faster, take a bigger, larger dry brush and get in there and wick the paint away. There we go, all cleaned away. So that's how you get rid of the Ravel over paints when you're using the aqueous colour. And that's one thing, I, another reason why I really like this colour. So I think we just need a little bit more touching up on on that seat there it dries very quickly this the Ravel colour covers beautifully just need to paint the front edge here there we go and a little bit of touch up at the back of the seat Mind all this is going to be weathered in, so plenty of opportunity to get rid of any pretty bits over paint. Very similar in colour, but you can see it's fairly added detail to the cockpit. So, I'm going to go and clean my brushes up on that. We're going to let that dry before we put any dry brush in at home, but what we can do in the meantime is start and take a look at some of the photo etch that's going to go in so let's get tidied up and then we'll get the photo etch out okay so we're back at it um i finished doing the bit of detail painting that i was going to move on to and i've also started on the photo etch now i must admit i have kind of flown ahead on it um just got into a bit of a groove but what we've got here is the eddard interior set from the big ed set so you can see I've removed a reasonable amount. Um, I still have the instrument panel to go, which I'm going to film in detail to show you how we work with putting an instrument panel together. But what we have done, if we can get this to focus, uh, there we go. So you can see, I'm going to really brush the point. You can see we've got photo etch in here, a um, little console there with some levers on and we've also got the side console in here with all the engine levers and whatnot the pilot needs. Um, there is 
I think a couple of radio sets or something here anyway. Not too sure what they are to be quite honest with you. And there's a few bits of instrument there that must all be to do with the bomb aimer's position because this obviously is the bomb aimer's position. Uh, and then moving over to the fuselage, the detail paint, it wasn't really much from where we left off to be honest with you. It was just adding a splash of colour. So we've got the E2 set here. If I can get a bit of better focus on that. Yeah, there we go. So we've got the E2 set, so you can see there's a little bit of red, a little bit of blue and yellow, and you can't see it very well, but the dials here are painted satin black, and that is just Citadel um, skull colour, I think it is. I can't remember, to be honest with you, but it's just a nice sort of creamy colour um, to represent what actually is a, sort of a panel with writing on. Same here. Um, and a little bit of dry brush, a little bit of silver. You can see we've painted some leather brown on the strap. The canister strap for the ammunition canisters, they were painted in um, semi-gloss black, which we saw in the last segment. And they've given a dry, light dry brush with light grey, and then a little bit of aluminium dry brush, I'm just trying to pick out the edges um, and make them pop. And a little bit of red in there, I'm assuming that's a fire extinguisher. Um, and we also fitted the um, walkway that goes between the two sections through the bomb bay. If we look in the cockpit, the rear bulkhead here, we can see the lovely photo etch here and here, the two fuse panels, and also there's a photo etch strap on the fire extinguisher. Now I've left it open on purpose, just to sort of show that it is actually separate from it. If I wanted to, I could I could close it up, but um, I think it's fine the way it is. And then I finished it all off with a dry brush of silver. Not a heavy one, just enough to pick out a little bit of detail and make it pop. We've also got a little bit of photo etch here on the side framing. And again, that was got a bit of dry brush. You'll also notice I fitted the windows, the glazings. So they all went in reasonably well. I had a couple of mishaps on it. You can see it on there. Got a little bit of glue. And I've just glued it in with Tamir Extra Thin because they weren't going to come out. I'm not worried about that. Um, but it did. I did clumsily push them onto the glass. So we're going to have a look at how to get rid of that, which is not a problem. It's another little thing to learn. Um, and then if we look on the other side, the fuselage, we've got a radio set in there, ammunition canisters, all the glazings in. And then there was this front framing there for the cockpit. We've also moved on and I have glued the wheel wells to the lower wing. The bomb bay, there we go. If I can get that to focus again. There we go. So lovely detail there, lovely detail in the wheel wells. So the next job on the, the wing is to actually attach the upper wing and we're going to make up the engines, um, get it in one sub-assembly before we join it to the fuselage. Um, so before we can join the fuselages together, I need to get the seat belts in, or the seat harnesses. And for that, I'm going to be using Great Wall Hobbies um, harnesses, uh, real fabric harnesses. So this came with the resin set for the cockpit. So I need to probably try and in this flat again so there's all the harnesses there there's all the buckles there you've got seat harnesses and there is also um, the strap seat for the upper gunner position um, so that's the next bit we're going to do so i'm going to clear the desk away and we'll get the harnesses flattened out and we'll start cutting them out and make ready for making the harnesses right so Fabric seat belts. Now, I think I said uh, in the last take that um, it's from Great Wall Hobbies, which is not. It's from HGW Models. Um, you can see the email address there, info at hgwmodels.cz. Uh, so there is the picture from the box. So it's the Heinkel 111 P1 uh, for the 132nd Revell, number 132035. Okay, so that's the microfiber fabric seat belts. Um, and there is the website address for them. 
uh, so it's resin accessories from HBH uh, and it's hgwmodels.cz and what we're looking to do is we're looking to make uh, the A and B belts which as you can see from the instructions uh, form parts of the shoulder harnesses for the two seats and the line down position so we need in three three pairs um, and that are those are the pieces there so you've got seven and eight which are obviously the links that go into the main hasp uh, you've got adjustment parts there parts two of the photo etch and then you've got further adjustments parts one of the photo etch and then you've got strap number one and strap number two now if i get my pointer you can see here i've made strap a up already i'll see if i can lift that up a pair of tweezers i'll put it in my hand so there we go excuse the cut let's see if we can get it to focus there we go so that is oh, it's obviously not printed on the rear it's just printed on the front so there's a little bit of nifty folding for part of it but that is the A strap there, I'll hold that with the tweezers so you can see that actually looks really realistic to be quite honest with you, the stitching is fantastic, stitching down the side and you've got the, the double stitching where the straps folded to take the links and obviously you've got the metal fitment, you don't need paint because it's already metal, so brilliant. That comes in, as we said in the instructions, you've got strap one there i'll just refocus that down there maybe, maybe try and zoom it in a little bit or maybe not so you've got strap one and strap two and then you've got photo etch one photo etch two and photo etch eight now you see already that i've done a bit of nifty folding and it will become clear as to why it's folded like that so obviously the first fold you fold up with the the clasp in its place. Now I really do apologize if you don't see this very well because I'm trying to do this at an odd angle and also see what I can do. Now it is quite small so it's not so easy. You've got to make sure the straight edge on the triangle clasp goes in towards the innermost of the strap so it's dead easy just to poke it through and the reason I've folded it first before I've put the metal work in is simply because it makes it easier. So we've got it in and we've gripped it in the tweezers. Now, I've just been sealing it with a drop of super glue, so I'm going to change hands because I'm right handed. This applicator here is just the applicator I get from um, the super glue set you get from Dispay. Chinese company. It's really good quality. I've used it on all my builds when it comes to photo etch. It's, I suppose you could, if you want, use something like the Glue Looper. It's an American product. Um, it's just a photo etch. I can get it zoomed in. It is just a photo etch. Uh, let me see if I can get it to focus. Come on, focus. There we go. I don't think you can see that very well. Maybe not there. So it's got, it looks like a, I mean, I have seen people use a pin, not chop the end off the, sorry, a needle, chop, chop the top off a needle and you get two little combs. That's all it is. The super glue wicks up and then you can dispense it. And to clean it, all you do is get a little bit of a gas lighter, light it up, burn off the super glue. Bob's your uncle. Yeah, back to. Yeah, you can see that, two little points. Right, that is super glued. So that's that bit done. Somehow I've managed to make an absolute tot of it. I'll put it in the wrong way. Not to worry, we can make this an A strip. Oh no, it's just the way it was. Right, so that's that bit done. Now, it's not so easy to see on the instructions, but what we do need to do 
let's fold it again. And you did see I had a second set of folds in, so you need to fold it. I do apologize if there's out of focus, and I apologize to state my hands, obviously from detail painting. So you basically just fold it, lap it over onto itself. And there, so you're making, and that's basically to imitate how the seat belts would have been stitched in real life. So again, so side on, you see how I folded it up onto itself. I'll get a drop of super glue. And you just glue, the, glue this one fold at a time. You don't need much glue. And you just press them together and try and keep it straight if, as, as you can. It will bite pretty quickly. Don't worry if it's not perfect because ultimately we are going to we're going to um, ruffle them up a little bit in the seat so it won't matter if they're not 100% straight and square. That is now glued. Right, let's look at the next part. So the next part of the strap is to get buckle number two. So I'll try and get a focus of that. There we go. See, it's got a nice bit of detail on. Sorry about this. I'm just using my iPad to film, so it's sometimes a little difficult to focus. There we go. So there's the details. Lovely detail. Now, what we need to do is this is part of the adjustment system. So we need to feed that up through. There we go. So that's going up through the buckle. So you just need to get a corner. And then you pull. Now, I'm sure it'll help if you have smaller hands than mine. I've got big ham fisted hands, but hey ho, I can still manage. So you've taken that and you've pulled it up through. You need to then fold it back on itself and pass it back down through on the other side of the buckle. It does help to have a good pair of needle point tweezers. They're quite firm. That's where I'm drifting out of shot. So pass that down. You can just see one side poking through there. Grip it with the tweezer ends. There. And then pull it. Gently tease it through. There we go. And then the, the ball of the ear, the other one did go a lot easier than this, I must admit. Try again. So you just need to get a corner through. Sorry, I'm drifting off the camera. I'm trying to film this and see what I'm doing at the same time. So, once you start getting it fed through, the rest will come through and you get a decent grip on the fabric belt. There we go. And gently tease it through. And there we have it. Now, you don't want too much. All you need to do for this bottom one is just to make a small loop. So if we look at this strap here, you can see, where are we? there we go. You can see how much of a loop. It's not much of a loop I have. It's not much of a loop. It's about three mil. So, you need to try and get these reasonably even, so you can even, if you want, lay them side by side, like that, and see how they look. And when you're quite happy that they are even in length, then I think they're actually not bad, actually, at that, I'm quite happy. 
what we need to do again is you need to fold this over on itself now pinch that's all you need to do good bit of pressure on there and you'll make a natural fold in it and then you want to just grip it with the tweezers there like that now I'm trying to drop it too much once it's in the tweezers then all you have to do is open the tweezers slightly dab a super glue in there and then close them back up again so we're just holding it in the tweezers all you need to do is slacken the tweezers up a little bit and then pinch it down once the super glue's in so with the applicator little reservoir of super glue on the hand ease it up a bit of super glue underneath it all and then trying to make sure before it sets up too quick which it's already done There we go, pull it apart, we have a little bit of working time. So super glue's in, press together, there we go, that's looking good. So we've got the first part of the strap done and we have the adjustment buckle in now what we need to do is this is the easy bit compared to the rest of it is we need to feed that one up in there again sorry feed it up through I'll try and get that in the focus for you. So feed it up through. I have to excuse my nails. I bite my nails. It's absolutely disgusting. I have tried to stop. Um, but failed miserably. So I am actually going to try again. F up through. And then down through. Now you don't need to glue any of this one. You just need to get it to the length you're happy with. And it will hold itself once you give it a little squeeze so up through and down through and then hold them flat like that give them a press and then if you give him a pull he works like a real harness he's actually held in place which is spot on now we can look at the other harness and see how much we've got and we think well actually we could do with a little bit more sticking out so we can then just get back in picture. Sorry about this chat, it's just difficult to film with such a small detail and keep it, see what you're doing and actually keep it in shot. So like that and then pull on the lower side, I'm trying to feed it back through, you can see why a good pair of tweezers is needed. There, that's better. Gentle squeeze to press it in shape. And there we go. And finally, you've got the last, which is the number one piece of foot wedge number one. That goes up and in. Just like threading a needle. And in, catch it on the reverse side. Now, obviously, if you're doing this, and I'm all right, I've got a laminate floor below me. But if you are in a carpeted room, it would be worth doing this in such a place where you can, if anything does drop or ping, you can find it again because these things are really small. And if the carpet monster got a hold of these buckles, the chances are you probably won't find them again. So he's gone up and again you just turn him 180 degrees on himself and then back through the second hole catch him on the reverse side and pull him through there we go 
See, and pull. And again, we need to square up the buckle for the strap, but also we need to get the first one we've done and make sure they're roughly even, which they are actually. Well, who'd have thought that, eh? And there is a pair of fabric harnesses for the seats. And I have to say, they're amazing. They really, really are good compared to either the steel or the foot wedge, color foot wedge brass. There's no paint involved, just a little bit of folding, gluing, and they're ready to go in. If you wanted to distress them, you could probably pop a little wash over them. I might do that, but I might not actually, because they look so good. Um, and that's it, then make them up and glue them in. So what I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna spend the rest of the evening making up the rest of the harnesses. I'm gonna fasten them to the seats and get the cockpit set into the left-hand side fuselage. And once I've done all that, we can have a quick look over it um, before we look to join in the fuselage halves, fuselage halves together um, and probably finish in this part of the build. Right, so moving on, we have now finished the harnesses. Let's see if we can get this camera to focus. There we go. Absolutely fantastic. I did deviate from the instructions a little bit for this um, mattress harness. Uh, HGW instructions said it needed to be the AB shoulder straps going across there, but there isn't actually enough in the set for it. So I've used the CD lap straps, which I think is probably more realistic having a lap strap with the actual buckle assembly. And also, um, I noticed that the straps I put in, harnesses I put in on the pilot seat, I put in wrong uh, last night when I was working away on it. Uh, so I managed to carefully take the lap straps apart and put them on correctly, as is on the co-pilot navigator seat. So I'm going to leave it at that and uh, have a quick summing up on the camera uh, to say basically where we're going from here. Right then, guys. So... That's the end of that part. Um, what have we got achieved? Well, we've done quite a lot. So we've finished up the interior detailing, all the gla uh, glazings in. We've got the cockpit attached. We've got those fantastic uh, super fabric harnesses from uh, HGW uh, models. I can't recommend them enough. Take your time with them. They're very, very easy. They go together very well and they look super realistic. So it's definitely a a huge addition to any any model aircraft that you want to put harnesses into. Uh, we've also been and got the outer, well, the, the inner wing panels with the top of the engine the cell glued on to the lower um, wing assembly with the wheel wells in, and obviously the the Eddard photo wedge bomb bay is all in ready to go. So we are at the point now for episode four. We're going to look at sealing up the fuselage. We're going to look at um, getting the engines built uh, and getting that whole assembly joined onto the fuselage and then moving forward we've obviously got to assemble the wings, horizontal stabilizers, tails, fins and everything like that. So that'll be in the next part four and then hopefully we can push on as, as best we can and get it to the point we can get it into paint and then we can start going on how we're going to paint this huge lump because it's massive um, but it's going to be great fun uh, trying to get the, the detail in to make it look more realistic. So enough waffling from me. Thanks for watching guys, if you stuck right to the end. If you wanna like and subscribe, I'd appreciate that. If you don't, it's not a problem. Um, if you've got any comments, put them down. I do make a point of reading all my comments and I will answer. Um, if you've got any questions, how I do stuff, anything that you want to know, put it in and I'll, I'll definitely answer you. Um, I do take the time to do that. If you take the time to watch my video and make the time to reply back to your comments. But anyway, Thanks for it guys, we'll see you in part 4, take care and happy modelling.